Thank you for tuning in today. This is Gospel Kingdom TV. My name is Pastor Josie Weymouth. The name of my program is called Setting the Captives Free. The Lord wants his people free. The name of my message today is called Let's Be Extravagant for God. God wants us to be extravagant. You know, the definition for extra extravagant is like exceeding the bounds, being passionate, being radical. In other words, over the top. You know, the Lord was like that. He was very extravagant and passionate in everything that he did. So he wants us to be the same. He wants us to be passionate. He wants us to, he gave us his best. He wants us to give him our best too, okay? You know, too many believers are content on just being mediocre. In other words, just kind of uh, passable, you know, kind of like uh, half to the top. They're in the middle of the road. In other words, not good enough. You know, do you know the definition for medial is lukewarm? What does God say about being lukewarm? Okay. What is the picture that he's trying to paint for us here as we go through these scriptures? Our first scripture is in Revelation 3.15. This is the Lord. I know your works, that you're neither hot, you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, he says, and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. In other words, if you're mediocre, mediocre, lukewarm, he said that he will spit us out of his mouth. Okay, so what is the Lord trying to tell us here today? Okay, as we go through the scriptures, my next scripture is in Colossians 3, 23 and 24. He says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Whatever you do. Because we do it as unto the Lord. We're not doing it as unto man. He is the one that's going to reward us. In other words, on your job, you do the best that you can do. In your marriage, you do the best that you can do because we're doing it, we're doing it as unto the Lord. We gotta remember that. Okay. In other words, where it says here, whatever means anything and everything. And where it says here, with all your heart, it says. You know, do it with excellence. Some people give God their leftovers. We're, to, we're supposed to give him our best because he gave us his best. He's not asking us to do something that he hasn't already done. We're to imitate him. And as we look at the life of Jesus, we're going to see that he was always very passionate to do what the, what the father wanted him to do. Okay. So our next scripture is in Ecclesiastics 9.10. It says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. The definition for might means strength, power, and force. Okay? And we have some very good examples in the word of God of people that were passionate. Besides Jesus, one of them was David. Okay? And this is when he was bringing the ark and it was bringing... He was bringing it to Jerusalem. Okay, this is in 2 Samuel 6, 14. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh, verse 20 and 22. David returned to bless his household. And Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today uncovering himself before the maids and his servants as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Micah, It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord and over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord, and I will even be more undignified than this, and I will be humble in his sight. The definition for undignified is extravagant. Do you think maybe that's one of the reasons he was referred to as a man after God's own heart? What does God say about us? What does he say about us? Okay, so now we're going to go to our next scripture, and that's going to be in Deuteronomy 5. Deuter excuse me, Deuteronomy 6, 5 and 6. 
It says here, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And you will commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. The definition for all is the greatest possible. So what is he trying to say? That we're to give him our all, everything. He gave us everything. That's what he wants. And this is a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment that we're to do it with all our heart. Okay, let's, let's, keep, let's go on. Okay, my next scripture, it's in Luke, and this is talking about Jesus. Like I said, he was passionate in everything that he did, okay? So in Luke 2, 48 and 49, this is when Mary and Joseph had gone to the Passover feast in Jerusalem. Well, going on the way back, they couldn't find him. So they returned to Jerusalem, and they found him in the temple, you know, with the religious leaders asking him questions and he was just there with them. And it says here in Luke 48, it says, So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, to, to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? He was only 12 years old. You know the definition for must means obligated? A 12-year-old is saying that he's obligated to be about his father's business. Even as a young boy, he was already passionate for the things of God. Do you know that the, do you know that the world knew about the passion of, of, of God, of Jesus? Mel Gibson did a movie years ago that was called The Passion of Christ. Even the world knew about the passion of Christ. Okay, so what is the Lord trying to tell us here? Doesn't it say in Jeremiah 29, 13, if you look for me with all your heart, you're going to find me. See, it's an, uh, he wants us to do it with all our heart. Let me read that again. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, when you seek me and find me, when you search for me with all your heart, how much of God do you want? How much of him do you want? You know, uh, I'm, something that the Holy Spirit just brought to me. If you remember that there's one of the disciples that Jesus referred to as the disciple that Jesus loved. He loved all of them. But this one, John was re referred to as the disciple that Jesus loved. Do you know that John would be the one that when he was sitting down, down he would sit right next to him and he would put his head upon his chest. Okay, that was John. Do you know that they all could have done that? But he's the only one that chose to do it. How much of God do you want? It's all up to us. Because he says that as we draw close to him, he's going to draw close to us. He says that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How much of him do you want? Okay. So our next uh, scripture is in Luke 21, and it's 2 through 4. And it's talking about the widow with the two mites. It says here, he saw the poor widow with two mites, which was about two pennies. And he said, the plain truth is that this widow has given by the, the largest offering today. All of these have made offerings that they will never miss. But she extravagantly, what she couldn't afford, she gave her all. Do you notice that Jesus pointed it out? He saw her. He saw her. Because she gave everything that she had. That's what he looks at. He looks at the heart. It's a heart issue here. Another person that I like to use a lot in the word of God is Esther. That was another person that was very uh, passionate. Okay. Here they had chosen a lot of the virgins. The king was looking for a new queen. So they had a time of 12 months of the preparation. They had to get prepared for 12 months before they went in before the king. Thus, it says in Esther 2, 13 through 15, it says, thus prepared each young woman went to the king. She was given whatever she desired to take with her from the woman's quarters to, to the king's palace. Now, when it came to Esther, the, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who was taking her as his daughter to go in before the king, she requested nothing. 
But what had GI, the king's eunuch, the custodian of women advised. In other words, all the other ones went in there and they looked up, they looked up beautiful clothes, they put perfume on, they put jewelry, but not her. She went to the eunuch, the king's eunuch, and said, what does the king like? What does he like? So he advised her, and that's what she went and put down, things that the king liked. Mm -hmm. And you know, she was the one that was chosen to be queen. Mm -hmm. I, I like to use her as one of my examples, okay? I have, a, I have an example here. I, I like to use illustrations, okay? This was a person that was very extravagant. In the 1600s in Italy, there was a man, he was a master craftsman. He would make violins, violas. His name, his name was Antonio Stradivari. Okay, and this is what he said. No violin shall ever leave the shop until it's near perfection. As a human care and skill could make it, he said, God needs violins to send his music into the world. And if my violins are defective, God's music will be spoiled. That's one of the things that he would say. He says, other men, other men make other violins, but no man shall make a better one. Let me tell you about his violins. Okay, let me tell you about that. The highest paid Stradivarius went for $16 million. Okay, in June, in June 2014, one of his rare violas was sold in an auction for $45 million. And this is what he would say. He would say, other men make other violins, but no man shall make a better one. Talk about somebody that was extravagant. He was very, very extravagant, okay? My next, uh, my next uh, scripture is in 1 Chronicles 11, 16 through 19. This was talking about three of King David's mighty men, three of them. David was then in a stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was in Bethlehem. And David was longing that someone would bring him a drink of water from the well in Bethlehem, which was by the gate. So three men broke in through the camp of the Philistines. They drew the water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. David, nevertheless, would not drink it. It, and he poured it out before the Lord. And he said, far be it from me, O God, that I should drink this. Shall I drink the blood of these men who risked their lives in jeopardy? For the, uh, it says, for at the risk of their lives, they brought it. Therefore, he would not drink it. These things were done by these three mighty men. They risked their lives to bring their king what, what he desired. They did not only obey him, they sensed his desire. And they were willing to risk their lives to go bring him that water that he wanted. But instead, it was so precious to him that he poured it out before the Lord. Talk about being extravagant. My messages are not long, but I believe that we are getting the message that God wanted to convey to us today. You know, my summary is... We are to, uh, to avoid being mediocre. In other words, lukewarm. We are to strive to be more like God. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is a God that's more than enough. As believers, you know, we should, you know, uh, tend to, be, to shine, okay, to have that passion that Jesus had. You know, he wouldn't ask us to do something that he hasn't already done. We are to imitate him. Remember that King David was passionate for the Lord. Remember that he was referred to as a man after God's own heart. What does he say about us? And we have to, last but not least, we have to remember that he gave us his best. We have to give him our best. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray over the message, and then I want to, uh, I always, before closing out, I want to do a salvation prayer. For those that have never accepted Jesus into your heart, or maybe for those that are away from God, the Father is waiting for you to come back. You could be a prodigal son or a daughter that's out there. He's waiting for you to come back so he can wrap his arms around you and to kiss you. The enemy will make you think that you're not good enough. 
that you, he'll never forgive you. Oh, yes, he will. That's a line from the pit of hell. He said he's married to the backslider. He's waiting for you to come home. He's waiting. So let, let's bow our heads. We're going to pray about the message first. Lord, we're just so grateful for your word today. We're thanking you for speaking to us through your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. And just reminding us of what your word says. Seal that word in our hearts and we will be doers of the word and not just hearers only. For those that don't know the Lord or maybe you're away from the Lord, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, please forgive me of all of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. One, one other thing that I wanted to mention to you, too, that maybe those that are away from God, remember that a, a fisherman first catches a fish, and then he cleans them, okay? He just wants you to come just as you are. If there's something in you that needs changing, he'll do it from the inside out, okay? And until next time, may God richly bless you.